So say that you're a filmmaker and you're making a movie and you want to have a scene in your movie where there's a guy wearing a sailor hat talking to the camera and there's some kind of impossible mystical creature floating in the background behind him. Say a floating burning spear of calm doom. Now, used to be back in the days of practical effects, you'd have a thing on a wire with some oil smeared on it and burning or you do some kind of stuff with models but now now that we have computers computers that can generate imagery we use CGI instead my background's Graphics. So for a year I did visual effects, mainly did it from home. And what's interesting is it's kind of a shock to Hollywood that these sort of films are popping up on the internet and stuff. And it's like, how are these kids doing this? What's going on? But to everyone that's doing it, it's, it we've been preaching this for like 10 years or so. Like, this is going to happen. We are going to be able to make movies from home this way. It just took a long time to get there. And all my friends who do visual effects, they haven't got access to... 35mm beautiful cameras and stuff. So when they do a little test shot, they have to pick up their home camcorder, go out into the garden and film something. And then they stick a dinosaur in it or something. And so inherently, what everyone had on their computers were all this footage of highly realistic footage, you know, like YouTube style camcorder footage, but with something really surreal and, and fantastic in it. And, and we all felt like someone's gonna make a film like this one day. And, Someone's going to be able to just like, some kids in their garage are going to make some massive, massive movie that's for virtually nothing. So how do you do it? How do guys like Gareth Edwards make these crazy monster shots, especially on location, shooting with a handheld camera? It's a thing called match moving or motion tracking, and I'm going to explain the very rudiments of it to you right now. Okay, so what you do is you shoot your shot without any fireball in it. You just shoot the person acting like there's a fireball behind them, like we're doing right now. Like say a fireball shows up. Ryo, wait, is there a fireball over there? Oh my god, a floating fireball of doom. So you put your footage without the fireball in the computer and then you put that footage inside the special effects program and use it to, you overlay the burning ball into the scene and then with a combination of acting and effects work, it makes it look like I'm in a room with a floating ball, kind of. But static shots on tripods have two drawbacks. They're, even though they're really easy to do in effects programs, they're really boring and they seem kind of fake. So you want to have some kind of visceral action. What you want to do is you want to pick the camera up off your tripod and you know, give it some documentary feeling like is all the rage nowadays. Like, you know, ER started to do, you wave the camera around like Cloverfield, like monsters, it starts to wobble and float, except now your burning sphere of doom looks super fake because it's not moving in the frame and it's clear that it's just something overlaid on top of an image in an effect program. What we need to do is we need to figure out how to get the ball to move and we want that move to match the movement of the camera or more specifically the movement of something that's static in reality like me in relation to the movement of the camera. We do that by using an effects program like Apple Motion or like Maya or like Adobe After Effects. So what all those programs do is they do this kind of complicated crazy math where you tell them a specific point in the scene that you're shooting, in our case we tape some tape to the wall, and you tell the program that you want the program to track the movement of that point in each frame over the length of your shot. And what it does then is it goes frame by frame and notes the coordinate position of that point and generates something called a track, which is a series of positions in a frame over time. Once you have that track, you can apply it to something else, like your floating ball of doom, so that it moves in each frame the same amount that your point moved in each frame. And because your point in the actual real frame in reality is still, like I'm still, the burning floating ball of doom will seem to be static compared to me. We'll both be moving around in the frame because the camera's moving, but we're both moving the same amount, which gives the illusion that we both exist in reality at the same time. And it looks super amazingly 
cool. And that's the power of motion tracking. Of course, it gets like a million times more complicated than that. You start using three points and two points and doing things in 3D and have perspective and scale and all that stuff. We're going to talk about that later, but you guys go have fun and watch Monsters right now because you're probably bored of watching me, you maniacs. So go out there and have fun.